Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Thank you so much for joining me again. This is a good one. Look, we're not in the workshop, we're in Cornwall. Just got out of the car, I've done a five hour drive to get down here. Uh, it's gonna be worth it, no question about it, because we have come down to Jeff Moss of MPH Motor Panels. He's an absolute legend in the wheeling world. I spent a couple of weeks with Jeff a few years ago now, and he it was my sort of first introduction to wheeling. He does a course, so if this Ranella journey has inspired you to give wheeling a go. I cannot recommend highly enough. Come down here and spend some time with Jeff Moss at MPH Motor Panels because he is honestly an absolute master. He's been doing it his whole life. His dad before him did it, I think all of his life. He has of course got a Ranella. That's where I first saw one and fell in love with these things. So this is a special workshop for me. Um, it brings back a lot of memories. I did spend an awful lot of time here. Whilst I was down here on the course, that's when I'd found the 356 in the States and it's Jeff's fault. Jeff was egging me on. He spent a week or two here whilst I was down, egging me on, encouraging me to buy it. So the 356 is all Jeff's fault and the Ranella project is also mostly Jeff's fault. <laughs> We're progressing so well with the Ranella wheeling machines and I'm at the point now where I've got all of the components apart from the wheels, top and bottom wheels. The top wheel is fairly straightforward. I kind of understand what I'm doing there the bottom wheels are available in all different profiles and that is an absolute minefield. I have got some original literature, the original blueprints of the wheels that Ranella made when they were new. The, they came with three wheels originally and I'm sure Jeff will agree, we'll ask him. And I wanna know which profile, which three profiles would be the most useful for when I sell a Ranella, when someone buys a wheeling machine, it will come with three lower wheels. What ones? <laughs> what profile, which ones? So I've brought down my collection of lower wheels that I've got from all of the machines that I've been gathering and I've brought them all down in the car to show Jeff. So hopefully we can sit and have a look, have a tea, and look through them all and hear his opinion. It'd be fascinating to hear what he's got to say about which wheels will work best for which situation. Um, it's just gonna be, yeah, an interesting, invaluable real conversation. So we'll see how we go. Jeff has basically spent his whole life working on a wheeling machine, making panels, building prototype cars for people and he builds these most amazing aluminium lightweight front ends for E-types, Lotus bits, and he works on the most amazing things. And uh, he, said, um, he said, I bought that brand in 1947 and it was 47 quid. And that's Len Pritchard. Len Pritchard, yeah. And that was his own personal machine. One careful owner. So nobody else ever used that machine. So that was my machine in the, in the workshop. And it's never been abused and you can see that. It's perfect. Yeah, it's the nicest condition one I've seen. Len Pritchard did lots of amazing things, worked with Lotus, built lots of amazing cars, and most importantly, worked at coach builders, Williams and Pritchard. Williams and Pritchard was a coach building company in West London. Jeff Moss's dad had the workshop next door to them and was also a coach builder, building all of the bodies, working with Len and his team there in his own workshop, helping them make bodies together for various all sorts of racing cars, Lotus, and lots of other types of cars. Because so, I used to work for when I left school. For your dad? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got you a proper job. So what's that? Aston Martin. Where's that? Northampton. <laughs> and where were you? London. In London, yeah. How long were you there for? 11 years. At Aston Martin. Yeah. And I left there and I went to Hazelmere Coachworks. Okay. Where we've done a lot of concept cars, and prototype cars, which is really interesting stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah, then I came to Cornwall. And then you come down here and look at the air. Go. Yeah. So that's what's this a whole new body. No, front and the back. Well, I mean, what, you would be yeah. the door. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is like a tiny little... Yeah, but it's, it's, it's all one panel. The headstock is all one. It's five inches higher at the back. It's quite ugly, really. And they, but they've done it for the, for the streamline effect. Oh, to scoop the air. Yeah. 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 Yeah, now that's an LM150. Lotus was, again. A Lotus, but that was the forerunner to the 15. Well, that was that. Now there's the, there's the TRS. Now I've done that from the original factory drawings. I had a clever old boy, an old, an old coach builder, made all the woodwork. That's the workshop. Dad's place was up here. So that's it. <coughs> so that warehouse that's in it. there that's is it. where your yeah, yeah, came yeah, from. Yeah. It was in there. Yeah, for all, all this stuff, I think. This is all lens stuff. All of these machines? Yeah, yeah. when he retired in 1996, I, I cleared him out, bought the, all the whole lot. The yeah, everything. fly press, the, yeah. every, all of the, the, even the yeah. Edwards, yeah. yeah. But he wouldn't sell me his wheeling, but that machine, he said, no, they're burying me with that. 
Then he rang me up and said, do you want me to win the machine, Jeff? <laughs> yeah, he said, come and get it, it's yours. And that was the last photograph. And then, then it was at that age, he yeah. was, yeah. Three, three months later, he was gone. So. That's amazing, it's a special, yeah. special machine, isn't it? Yeah. Jeff has actually got a letter saying this was Len Pritchard's personal will. Nobody else in the workshop used it. It was kept to his side for him to use. Oh, that's brilliant. I hope my father's <laughs> magic touch transfers to you. Yeah. yeah. I will warn you now, things do get a little bit nerdy, but that's the whole point of the video. This is the whole point of going down to see Jeff uh, to try and sort out what on earth I need to do with these lower wheels. I was quite excited by this one. Yeah, it's made for a special job, isn't it? Sort of useless for most jobs, but yeah, that's it's old though. I feel that's I don't old, know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good one. This is a good finishing wheel. This wheel here is what you do all this sort of stuff. So it's just tracked through there lightly. It's just a washing over at the end yeah, for the final. And look at the shape it gives you, and that's done on a wheel like that. The machine is used for shaping metal. You put a sheet of aluminium through it, a sheet of steel, and it, it rolls through two wheels. The top wheel is dead flat. The bottom wheel is adjustable. You can wind it up and down uh, to adjust the pressure you put between the two wheels. So as you feed the panel through, there's a certain amount of pressure there that's squeezing it through. That's, that's the boy. Because yours are original Ranola. And so these, I think, are old. They're original as well. They're original, yeah. And these lower wheels are critical for the actual Ranola wheeling machine to work properly. So because the top wheel is flat and the lower wheel has got this radius, when you wind that wheel up, the contact patch is just that point there on a flat sheet of aluminium. It's going to be just in the middle because of this radius touching, I think it's a curved part touching a flat part. It's only going to touch in one tiny little point. But this has got a flat bottom wheel. So that section there is flat, which increases the contact area hugely compared to this one little thin point in the middle. Where that flat section blends into this radius, that area there, there can't be a corner there. This can't be dead flat because it would end up creasing here and here, would end up creasing the panel. As you see, there's a very, a few thou, a milliwatt, all right? in the center so you, but it's a flat there okay so i can see where there's more wear that that, that tiny little sort of that's, five mil line in the middle that's your main point of contact if you get a full radius wheel they all come to a peak so they're fine if you wheel with very light pressure so it drops down onto your panel but these wheels were, were they the terminology is they're flat they're not flat oh, so you do you so you prefer the flat wheels but they're not actually yeah, flat because you get a, <laughs> they're yeah. not calling them flat because yeah. you get your track a lot quicker as you're tracking back and forwards you're feeding it in feeding it out he's actually moving over and sort of washing across the panel and how you do that completely changes the shape of the curve of the panel that it actually makes whereas if it's a full radius wheel ir ir irrespective of whether they're flat wheels or a high crown wheel it hits that high point straight away yeah, you with me? so if it's, well, if it's a continuous radius, continuous all the way across, yeah. the flat panel is only going to ever touch on a tiny point in the middle, no matter what is happening out here. And the minute you start the wheel, how you start is how you finish, and as you wheel it, you're immediately going to stripe your panel. From buying all of the machines that I've got, they've all come with different wheels here and there, and I've gathered them from various places. I'm trying to gather a bit of an archive, I guess, of these are all original Ranola wheels. Uh, well, mostly. I mean, if you look at this one, again, it's just a milliwatt, just a tad. It's not flat. Otherwise, no. it would pick up on the shoulders. You with me? Yeah, exactly. Now, if, still, you, it's now not. if you look at that panel, then it works well. See that? Look how much it tracks. That wide. How wide the, yeah. No marks. And that's because, it, is that because it's a low crown panel? Yeah. So oh, it's yeah, got you a nice wide. a lot of shape with that. This is all produced with flat wheels, really. There's no real high crown wheels. You know, if you're doing a diamond pattern on that, you're doing this to get to generate yeah. shape. Use the flattest wheel the finished panel will allow. And if you, you if you get your tracking patterns right, then you can achieve a heap amount of shape with a flat wheel. I don't want you to swear at me now, but so when I've seen videos where people have a sandbag on their stump and they're making like a kind of 
rear corner of a roof or something like that, like a, like a panel kind of like that with that much shape. But would you, have you made this like that? No. By hammering it and making it all walnut shells kind of hammered no, no, out? No, 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 no. 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 I'll use, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll use a hammer and a sandbag with really tight shapes like, the only time I'll ever preform something is, is like this here. These front corners. You know, that's what, you, that's what the sandbag is designed for. You no need to do it with this. It's how you use them, isn't it? It's how you use it. So yeah, really, even if you, yeah, it's how you use the wheel, exactly. Yeah. That is where Jeff's lifetime of experience comes into play, which is why it's absolutely invaluable, really, for me that I got the chance to spend the afternoon with him talking about all of this and just picking his brain on what on earth to do. Yeah, I'll show so you. That one I thought was another useful one. Yeah, they're all good, they're all good, mate. That's a nice wheel, actually. Yeah, again, see, so look, see the centre part? But would you call that... Do you think that they would call that a flat wheel? No, that's that's, your, that's a finishing wheel, that one. You see that? That runs a track about that wide. Yeah. But well, they pass the flat wheels. That runs perfect. See? You're running a track about a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. Whether you turn the panel 90 degrees and go over like in a crosshatch 90 degree pattern or turn it 45 degrees and create a diamond pattern, all of these different techniques and processes and, and manipulations change the panel and change the actual shape of what you're making and the finish, which is very important. that has got a slight bit of shape in the center. It's been on a laser. This is the one, yeah, has someone ground it? This is, my, this is yeah. partly why I've come down to have a look at yours, which haven't been messed around with. They've had a life. They've had different people working on them in different workshops over the years and things get modified. Like this one, example, for example, someone has quite clearly modified this over the years. And that's the joy of the wheeling machine. If you've got a particular job where you've got a very tight panel that you need to get in, you can make your own wheel or modify another wheel. The edge yeah. of the shoulders is but just clearance. Don, that, that was never right from the start. Look, look at the width of the wheel. Someone's just dropped these shoulders off. That, that almost looks dead flat, which they did offer. I've got that in the, in the original sales brochure as well. Yeah, you get your flat wheel. Like dead flat for, for stretch. I suppose you can tip it one way and stretch a flange or something. Yeah. 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 That's done with your flat wheel. All your swages are done with a flat wheel. Is that where you utilise the, the, the bolts and tip tip the lower wheel one you way? You only tip or? it if you want to get in the higher... You so know, you would just tip the panel and just roll it on one? Yeah, you just pull your panel down and glide it through. And that, but right. if, you, if, if you want to get up higher, then you just raise the, okay. the lower anvil with put a bit of paper under it or yeah. set it up a tad, you know? But it's something that they can easily manufacture in it. So probably when you're selling your wheeling machines, You'd be better off with a low crown finishing wheel like that, yeah. than a, a higher crown one, and then a, a, a middle of the road middle of the road finishing wheel, on it. Yeah, and that's basically what you get with the full kit. I use two wheels, and that is. Well, you can see the shiny ones. You can see which ones that are used. One's there, yeah. Right, and this one here. Three of them. And I only use that high crown wheel there. That's it. The rest are just for specialist jobs. Yeah. Now you tell me what you think is the best. There is no mark. No mark. Yeah, why is that not left a line down the middle of it? Yeah, because it's, it, the that's tight the full bit, radius but... wheel. This craft is all about the feel. And as you're passing the metal through the wheeling machine, it is all about how it feels and how it goes through. And I want the new continuation of the Ranola to be the same or as close as we can get to the originals. No, it's not, it, it, it's not close tracked. You don't want no, to close track it. No, you can see the gaps it. between it, yeah. yeah. If you close track it, you will get a huge amount of shape, right? So you just widen your tracks up for a flat panel or a roof panel or a door panel. That's all you do. The center part, like I said was saying to you earlier, what you would consider to be a flat, is just a milli whop off, off the flat. Yeah. And it's pretty much so the same on, on so all of them. It, so it blends your shoulders in, that's yeah. all it is. So that's the same whether it's running a quarter of track or a half inch or three quarter track. Now when the shoulders are lower, you get more shape in your panel, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like this one, if you feel this, you cannot feel the shoulders. And yeah, if you put straighteners on that, you'd say that was flat, well it isn't. Even there? So like, so there to there is, is different. Yeah, if you look yeah. at that, look, 
It's just the tad off flat. See that? Yeah. Just the tad. The, the, I mean, the top, whatever that radius is that's on this center contact patch, do you reckon that is the same on all three wheels? Yes. yes. It's, so, just, it's just the amount drops off here. It's just the amount it falls off the edge. Exactly. So the con that actual five mil in the middle. Is the same on all wheels. All of them. Yes. It's just, yeah, like you're saying, it's how much you can, shape you can get out of it is dictated by the edges. Exactly. See that? Yeah, so that, which is good, no? No, it's good. That's yeah, all right, because the, the flat is not round. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You, can, you can use them. These will all be good. Don't muddle them up. I don't want them to end up, yeah. Um, that, that's oh, a yeah. finish angle. Another one of them. But that's a good wheel. There's... I had to use that one once. Anyway, yeah. you, can, you can take these if you want. That, right, sh that, show, that shows your flat centre, look. So maybe that's what I do then. Maybe I have the 3D drawings made from my blueprints, uh, from, from this. Show it flat. And do it, and do it, machine it, not flat, but at least there'll be like a shoulder, yeah. and then put them on my lathe, and you can yeah, run them up here. Bring it up here and we'll test them, yeah. Because then we can just take a little bit off and try it. Take a little bit off and try it. Keep giving it back to Jeff, let Jeff try it until he's happy, and then lock it in. Then I've got three perfect ones that Jeff's happy with, Good. And if Jeff's happy with them, I'm happy with them, and I don't care what anyone else says. <laughs> Look at the difference in the track. Look. So there you go. You've got to get it so it's doing that, not that. Yeah. You know, if you were to do your diamond pattern with that, you'd whack loads of shape in it. Same pressure. You just drag the shape right up. Yeah. yeah. And that is a high crown wheel look. That's as high as you'd need. So yeah. that would be the, so if it was one, two and three of the wheels you'd get, that's as high, yeah, that that's as extreme as you'd I would expect. Go, I would go with that as your high crown wheel. I'd do one of them. And then that big finishing wheel. And one in the middle somewhere. Something like that. Yeah. So I have, well, even I've, though these look very shallow, this generates an awful lot of shape. You'd be surprised. And uh, you would say there's very little between them, but there's a huge amount between them. Between right? that and that? Yeah. They look the same, that's, that's flat, isn't it? I'm just trying to absorb as much information from him as I can and just quiz him and question him. He tried all of these, put them all in his machine, cleaned them all up, had a go, passed a piece of metal through, within about two seconds, he was like, no, that's no good. I mean, look, that's a flat wheel. It's still not reached its uh, potential yet. Well, you'd look as a flat wheel, you see? Yeah. And if you had a big panel, that would generate a huge amount of shape. More than you'd need in a roof or a big, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next one is even higher crown again. Not so you, got, yeah. you, you don't really want to be in reinventing the wheel, do you? So <laughs> literally, yeah, that's literally what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we learned that all of the wheels that I've got here are useless. Jeff doesn't like them. None of them are any good. There are a couple that are close. This one, I think Jeff like. I think that Jeff like quite like that one. An off-flat wheel like this one, that's a good finishing wheel. A medium-sized wheel, so something like that one. Yeah, with sh lower shoulder. Sort yeah, of less. forget that, because that's flat. And, you want, and you're going to want a flat wheel, aren't you? Yeah, I know it. Right? Pretty close. Okay, yeah, pretty close. Yeah. All right. So yeah. that could be a high crown. That's your high crown wheel. Yeah. If you haven't got something like that. Yeah, if I haven't got a ball. I, I would go with that. Go for a ball wheel. All right? right. It looks the part. It looks the part. You're going to go, yeah, that is definitely That's high the crown. high crown yeah. one. There's one, two, and three. That's number yeah. three. Yeah. The creme de la creme for flat wheels, that is irreplaceable. That is, is the that best all I've got. Mostly flat, but just knocked off the corners. Yeah, that's the one that's going to do your roof panels, your door panels, yeah. your big old flat panels. So, so that's the kind of, that's the number one. That's the flat. Yeah. So the contact patch is what, like that much? Yeah. And that's then a, just that's the edges are... Just drops off. That's a three quarter flat. This is why I've come down, I suppose. So that's, that's a heel, like, that's your favorite. That's, that's... That is what I would class to be an idiot proof wheel. What are going to do with this then? What you want? Yeah, all my wheels are going in the bin. <laughs> no, that one, you get the whole profile. <laughs> But luckily, he has lent me three of Len Pritchard's original Ranola wheels. And can you believe I'm actually holding this in my hand? I can't, I can't. If you, I, I will mark them though, so I don't muddle them up. I'm very aware that I'm not gonna. Yeah, but if you bought, so basically, if you bought a wheeling machine yeah, with those three, you, would be, you wouldn't be upset. I would go 
I would go with something like one at the higher, slightly yeah. higher crown one. So but that could be this one. This would be yeah, the higher crown. Make a higher crown wheel with that one. Yeah. You want that one as your finishing wheel, and that's your intermediate wheel, isn't it? But they are going to be the most useful reference, but still only a reference. I've got the original blueprint drawings of these lower wheels and all the measurements. Use those measurements to make a blank. Then I think I'm going to have to put that in the lathe and fine tune it by hand, maybe just with a little bit of emery paper or something like that, and just gently round off the corners and soften off the flat, make it ever so slightly round by hand. So I don't know where that leaves us with mass producing and selling these in the future because they all need to be the same. Hopefully, once I've finished them and I've got them that Jeff's happy with them, I'll take those back. Maybe I get that 3D scanned. Maybe I'll show that to the guys that are doing the 3D models of the wheels and they can tweak their models and we'll try again. But it's going to be a lot of trial and error. But luckily, I've got enough reference material here with the original blueprints and Jeff's knowledge that he's very happy to help me. So one way or another, it will be a long twisting road, but we will get there and I'll make sure that the three wheels that the Ranala wheeling machine comes with are as they were originally to the drawings and most importantly, will work perfectly. I know Jeff is a big fan of the show. I've got my mug. I did give him one before, but I think he broke it. Brilliant. You look after this one. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you know what happens, don't you? Sit and see, I went like that, sit and see bag, and the handle broke off. Oh, so it's faulty goods. So faulty it's, it's goods the mugs, yeah, yeah, cheap mugs, like see? And it's even got a G on it, like. It's G, yeah, there you go. There you go, thanks for that, John. You're welcome, you're welcome. You're welcome. I really hope this video has inspired you. If you really want to learn how to use one of these amazing machines, I cannot recommend enough getting in touch with Jeff at MPH Motor Panels. So we'll put a link to Jeff's website in the description below. Get on his website, give him a call, book yourself in for a course because he is very, very generously, he is teaching wheeling courses and you can go down there for a couple of days, you can go down there for a week, I would go down there for six months if I could. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Brilliant. Bye. Lovely to see you. Yeah. <laughs> see you soon. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope I've inspired you to give it a go. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry it's been a bit geeky. It's been a bit of a nerdy one, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If anyone has got anything Ranella related, old adverts, magazines or anything like that, please, please, please get in touch. Leave me a comment below. I'm just trying to gather as much information as, as I can about the Ranella company. Make sure you've liked and subscribed and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, you little gnat or something. I veered off again, for goodness sake. <laughs>